right, so I'm out at Muscle Rock in Pacifica. This is a spot I haven't been to in well over a year. Uh, it's kind of a hike to get down here, but it's a beautiful spot. A little bit windy today, and the surf is pounding. So hopefully you guys will be able to hear me. But anyway, I'm gonna uh, be working on a square canvas today, 20 by 20 inch. As usual, I probably will be moving some elements around, but I'm mostly attracted to the shadows cast by the big rock to the left. And then I also like the fact that there's um, some distant land. All right, so I'm gonna go with a high horizon, maybe uh, about a quarter down from the top. And I think I do wanna include some bits of foreground here, like some ice plant, a uh, bit of green in the foreground, maybe even a rock or something too. The next decision is where to put the largest rock. I'm gonna experiment with having that right here. I'm gonna run it off the top. There's a smaller rock behind it that does come up like this and cast a shadow. And then over here, there's some other rocks. Something like that. There's also some rock close too, like a rock here and a rock here. I think the tide is going out, which will actually reveal more rocks, which could be interesting. I don't want the shadow to mimic the land here too much. I might have it pop out a little bit. Maybe like that. You know what, actually I do want it to be more of a line like this. I think it's okay because this line is like this, this line is like that. And then there's some distant hills or mountains here. Comes down like this. Once I get the basic shapes in place, then I become more specific with the lines. Just looking for interesting contours in the rocks. All right, I wiped this shape down here because I think I actually want it to move over a little bit. I want to have a bigger opening right in here so that this rock will actually come down more like this. Now this gets kind of confusing, but it's so important to get the composition right before progressing. So oftentimes I'll, you know, wipe out the composition several times before settling on something that excites me enough to go to the next step. All right, now I'm working with a mixture of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue to reestablish some of these lines. Uh, these shapes are going to be dark, so I'm already starting to lay out the dark, uh, the dark outline, more or less. All right, there's a rock here, like that. This rock actually comes down a bit lower. So like this. Now that the shapes are established, I'm just gonna scrub in quickly here. The light's changing, of course, so I wanna capture uh, the lighting effect I'm seeing now before I lose it. I don't usually run rocks right off of the top of the uh, canvas, but I'm gonna try doing it here just to suggest, you know, how tall this rock here is. Keeping the paint transparent. All right, now I'm putting in the shadow shapes in the water using ultramarine and titanium white. I'm paying attention to value here. I wanna make sure that there's a strong contrast between the light and the uh, shadow portion of the water, but I also wanna have some contrast between the dark rocks and this shadow on the water. All right, shadow cast by this rock here, and then also uh, by this one. I want to have this irregular and kind of suggesting waves coming through. And there's a little bit of shadow at the base of some of the waves that are coming through as well. I'm trying to capture a bit of that. Okay, for the distant mounds, I've got titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a touch of alizarin crimson. And I'll probably have to lighten up these distant mounds in order to push them all the way back. But this, I think, is a good starting point. Something like this here. And 
and have some visible transparency and brush strokes in the distant hills. All right, for the sky, I've got a mixture of titanium white and phthalo blue. I find that having phthalo blue in the sky, even when it may appear to be more of an ultramarine, it actually helps increase the feeling of light in the sky. While I'm blocking in, I'm just looking for general colors and then I will become more specific with colors and values once the whole canvas is covered. All about simple shapes at this point. If I have a good arrangement or a pleasing arrangement of simple shapes, then the painting should work out and I don't want to progress in the process until I'm happy with the arrangement of simple shapes. There's some big waves rolling through today. I'm gonna uh, actually paint in the light portion of these waves first uh, with some thick paint. It's titanium white with a bit of ultramarine blue in it. And I probably will come over at the top of this with some, uh, with some warmer white, but for now I do wanna establish uh, the wave pattern so that I know how dark to make my surrounding water. Maybe I'll have another suggestion out here. They're really coming in today. All right, so I've got a gray green here I'm starting with. And again, paying attention to values. Uh, this water is lighter in value than the mountains, but darker in value than the white water. So it looks like I might have to darken this water a little bit. And if I darken this water, then I have to darken the mountains as well. The water does get darker as it comes closer to shore. And I want these lines here to be somewhat irregular as well to suggest all the chaos in the water. I feel like I want this wave to come over a little further like this and maybe even have another one right there. And then this one, going behind the rock. Actually, I don't like this right here. I wanna have some more like vigorous movement right here in the foreground. All right, now painting in the white water using a mixture of titanium white and ultramarine blue. And this will be the last step in blocking in the painting and then I can step back and see if I like what I'm seeing. Actually, no, I've got the grass to do. All right, starting with a dark green mixture here using ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow medium. I will probably come over this with some lighter bits, warmer bits. I don't want this foreground to stand out too much. I want a suggestion of foreground, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. All right, there's the composition. All right, the wind is really picking up out here, so I'm gonna work quickly. I'm actually not gonna do much more than I've got right here. It's kind of, you know, an experiment to see if I can come up with a good composition, you know, good square composition. Uh, right now, I'm mixing in some thicker passages of titanium white with some dioxazine purple. All right, so I've got a warmer mixture of titanium white here. I want to create a feeling of light in this painting. That's, what's, that's one of the things that's important to me. So hopefully having the warm play against the cool is creating that feeling of light. Sometimes purple actually will create a feeling of light as well. It's interesting. All right, so here's what I finished up with. Uh, there are a few things that I worked on after I turned off the camera. At one point, some yellow clouds passed by in the sky, so I decided to include those, and I just erased out a little area uh, using a paper towel, kind of wiped out an area, got the blue paint off, and then I filled it in with the yellow clouds. Um, and I actually like having a bit of interest in the sky back here, and you know, it kind of helps to lead the eye in this direction, uh, and creates a bit of light in the sky as well. I also worked on the rocks after the camera went off, um, just doing the usual, looking for delicate shifts in color and value. As far as the composition goes, I do like the composition. I feel like there's a good sense of depth, and I like how it looks like you're looking down, you know, in the foreground, and then your gaze goes out into the distance. 
The only thing I think I might change is, I think I might make this rock here bigger in the foreground. I'm not sure. I wouldn't go any higher, but I would, I would just increase it down below. But I'll wait until the painting dries so that I can wipe it off if I don't like what I'm seeing. All right, so the last three videos I've been painting on 20 by 20 inch squares. And I do feel like, I still feel like it's really challenging to paint a square composition uh, when I'm doing a landscape or seascape. Um, but uh, it's a challenge that I welcome. I do think it's good to kind of, uh, to sort of shake up your process and do something that makes you uncomfortable and makes you really think, get you out of that sort of autopilot that sometimes we find ourselves getting into. Um, but, so who knows, I've got a bunch of square canvases. Now I've got some 20, bunch of 24 by 24s. So who knows, maybe I'll scale it up. I do think that sometimes even with the 20 by 20s, I was feeling a little restricted as far as, uh, you know, as far as the shapes were concerned, the shapes felt a little too small to be fully uh, loose and expressive with. So, um, so maybe next time I'll go out and do a 24 by 24. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated. So check it out. Other than that, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video.